All right, so woke up this morning and my back was basically just just locked up. Just just not very functional at all. And you know, I'm a firm believer that you should listen to your body and you should you should take it easy if your body's telling you that it's just it's just not able to do something, you should listen. So I did the right thing. I stopped in and got a couple Advil. I'm about to strap this pack on my back and climb up a mesa. Man, it feels like I slept on my head. What the heck, man? Out there on YouTube, I see there's uh, the Bad Apple Fly-In, I guess, is this weekend. So there's a lot of my buddies up there. Hope y'all are uh, having a good time and hope the weather's going to treat you real good. Time to make the uh, long, boring Texas Plains drive over here to the canyon. It sounds like you're in a wind tunnel <laughs> driving it. And that's always, it can be 30 miles an hour and it will sound like you're in a wind tunnel. It's just the way it is, it's all Jeep. You don't have no carpet on the floor. It's got a roof rack up there, just dragging through the air and shaking around. And it does, uh, it does look like uh, the weather's gonna clear up a little bit. Got a little sunshine coming out. We'll see. My dream someday is to actually be able to get some real altitude from down here. The, the canyon walls, the biggest ones I can find, about 280 to 290 feet. Generally speaking though, it's more like 200 to 220. So not very big. It's it's not uh, it's not impossible to get away from a little little ridge like that, but it's not easy. And uh, and the problem is is once it gets uh, lifty enough to, to kind of get some altitude and get out, you know, then you're running into the problem of do you really want to take that low collapse? That's sketchy. So one thing I like about the Plum Creek area is it's a fairly easy hike. There's a ridge, it goes up and then down and then back up and it takes you right there. And Some of these places I'm finding in the Southwest to get to, dear gosh, they are just a miserable hike. I mean, La Bajada is all, uh, is all volcanic rock that I don't know how people don't just twist their ankles there on a constant basis with those rocks that just break and roll down the mountain as you're trying to climb up it. But it is a lot more accessible than some of the other sites that I've found and it's a lot more accessible than some of the kind of the more official places I've seen. One thing I like about this hike is that there's a readily accessible game trail here. It has a little less uh, of these non-stop cactuses because everywhere you walk out here something wants to bite you. And I would say there's probably a cactus about every three or four feet. And here's another and more. I mean, it's basically an invasive species that's just epidemic. So there's just always something to be getting at you. I think, uh, hmm, where to launch from? I think it's gonna be the same as last time. Yeah, I think this is gonna be the PG point here. This is our most common wind direction here. It's from the south to southwest or south to southeast. The magic ridge right out there. Miles of west facing ridge. Look at that beauty. 230 to 260 feet. We just don't get the wind for it usually. West is considered a common direction here for wind, but the wind out of the west is usually 30 plus miles an hour. It's not really paragliding wind. Wind out of the south southeast is more of our paragliding wind. Well, there's a strong cycle. I mangled my wing. That's typical. This is a uh, somewhat technical launch. This is one of those areas where the ground tends to give out from underneath your feet. So here's what we do to combat this craziness. First of all, we make sure we don't have a cravat. We lay our wing out. Oh man, the lines got gnarled there. All right, and we put a little rock. Oh, I can't have 
have that. Some little rocks, I'm getting two mangled out. And then we'll pull our lines out and check those. This location rocks. Stupid dad jokes, I've got them. Ever since I started gliding in general, I've always turned to the right. And I've never really had in, ever since training, had a time where I clipped in to the left. But it damn sure happened this flight and it was almost a life changing event. Thank God that my PPG instructor taught me how to kite over a twist and how to fly backwards, even though in a PPG, it's almost never gonna happen. Certainly save my bacon here. Get the rocks off now. That was bad. Thank God I do kite. I was able to pull my brake and ride the ship before I went right back into the dirt. Oh, lucky me. Uh, gonna be lots of sticks and grass, but I came close to the LZ. <laughs> My 10 foot wide LZ. I'm gonna try for a redemption flight now. I'm gonna try a little different launch. See if I can find a way to do this a little safer. Because one of the problems there is, I have no real length to run down the hill or yeah it's just a it's a very narrow launch with no room for error and that's kind of what bit me there too so back up the hill i go Oh well, sometimes you catch a, a straggler and that happens. Damn it. Lots of altitude though, that's good. Gentle thermals. This is why we wear gloves in free flight, and I just happen to leave them at home. I really don't want to get myself a full blown collapse just over that. I should probably go land though, I don't like it, and it won't come out. It's a flight I've been wanting forever. There's a fucking stick in the... Oh, well. <laughs> ah, don't get too frustrated here. 
I mean, it really isn't even affecting the flight characteristic much of the wing, but I know that I'm more susceptible to collapses with it like that. So it's probably safe to just go ahead and fly in. Damn. It's a nice humid day, which we just don't get much of. And Stick. Still got that little devil's claw or something up in there. The air is active, but not terrible. It's what you really kind of want, but you don't want that damn weed in there. <laughs> I don't know. It's in my, it's in my mind. I've decided to go ahead and land. It's gotten even worse from trying to pull it out. Wow, I'm coming straight down. Let's go ahead and get a little bar here. Well, damn, I had playing in the grass. Was not my preferred landing location, but with that cravat, it just... Wow, that was a bad one. Damn it! Could have been my best flight here to date. And now it's gonna be too strong by the time I get back up there to really launch. Damn it, damn it, damn it. All right. Settle down, wing. I'm coming. This is a challenge. Yep. All right, there's why you wear gloves. I'm lose a finger doing that. It's in my flight deck, which I did not pack. And think about the gloves being in there. I didn't need any of the rest of it. This is annoying out, but it's not trees and it's safe. This stuff, when it's real tall, doesn't really affect your wing much. Ah! Damn grass as tall as I am. Dang it. I could have taken that one to cloud base. Easy peasy. So frustrating. I guess maybe I could have seen that there was a stick there and killed it, but I just didn't see it. And it was pretty rowdy. It came through a cycle right as I pulled. I waited for a cycle to quit and then pulled it up. Another cycle came right behind it and just kind of plucked me. So it's just right at that point. And And, and the wing was flying good. Me trying to get the wing clean is what, it got the big stick out, but the big stick was just hanging there. It wasn't even, it wasn't even crunching the lines, but that little stick was just brutal. All right, time for the walk back. Shouldn't complain. I think the guys down in Austin and stuff, they, they're tow rig only. Of course, I don't have a tow rig, or I might be tow, tow only too. Because man, towing up today would be beautiful. You'd have about an hour or two flight and then the thunderstorms start hitting. And man, they're gonna be rough today, I bet. We normally don't get this much moisture in the air. I wonder what that thing is. Oh, that's an old boat ramp. <laughs> that's the old boat, boat ramp. I'll be darn. Guess I have to count myself a little lucky to have this place at all. Whew. It's definitely starting to warm up. That air felt great. That felt like Eastern Oklahoma air with broad thermals, nice and fast, not violent. Just enter them nice and easy. Most of the time we get thermals here, they just 
yank and bank you so damn hard. <laughs> it's more like Colorado flying here most of the time. This humidity is keeping it perfect. So if you made it this far, I have to wonder what you're doing with your life. I didn't film an outro. I was pretty bummed overall about the flight, but you know, in retrospect, uh, after a few days, I'm okay with it. It's a learning experience. I, I took away a lot of things from that. How did I miss that I was clipped in the, the wrong way? My God, I can't do that, especially if I'm alone on a mountain and I don't have someone else looking over my kit, you know, that I ask. Buddy systems are really nice uh, if you have other pilots with you. I had a really good chance to have a really great flight, but it ended up being only a 13-minute flight. But a 13-minute flight is the longest flight I've made from that location. So in that respect, I guess it's possibly a site record unless, you know, you go back 20, 30 years and maybe someone took a hand glider off of there and did better. But to my knowledge, it's a site record. So it's a win. Um, hope everybody's doing great. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you're at one of the fly-ins, leave the LZ, have a good time, drink a cold one for me. Peace out. Oh, things you can do in a paramotor that you can't in a free flight harness.